This video is sponsored by Balsam Hill, offering the highest quality craftsmanship to create stunningly realistic Christmas trees you'll love. YouTube and Instagram friends and welcome to the 2019 edition of my 12 days of Christmas. I am ecstatic about sharing the next few days with you so I wanted to say thank you for spending this time with me. We are starting on a Saturday this year because the first two videos are going to be a little bit longer than you're used to but I've got a lot of really good information to give to you to help you get your trees styled and your holidays kicked off so I want to make sure I give myself enough time to cover all my bases so the first two videos are a bit longer but then the rest of them will be pretty much what you're used to around 10 minutes no more than 15 so you can get out the door and on your way this year I have partnered with Balsam Hill. You guys, dreams have been coming true this year with some of these partnerships and this one is a big one. These trees are absolutely spectacular and so I'm going to take a few minutes to tell you what I love about this company and about these trees and my goal for the video is for you to walk away with at least five really good tips that you probably haven't heard before. So some of them you may have but I'm going to make sure that that's what I focus on. So I'm going to get started with that. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about Balsam Hill. So I know a lot of you guys are like me and you look forward to your annual Hallmark Christmas movies to enjoy as you celebrate the season. And there's one thing that I've, I've always asked myself about those trees, which is where did they come from? They always look so full and perfect. They are from Balsam Hill. Balsam Hill offers the widest selection of luxurious, most realistic looking trees on the market. A lot of tree companies will purchase their trees from brokers, but Balsam Hill doesn't do that. They actually handcraft each and every tree that they put out right there at home. What makes Balsam Hill different with their trees is something called true needle technology. And this is where they send their designers out into different parts of the country where different types of trees grow and they study them and they come back and they model the foliage behind what they found out in nature. I've had two contractors come in the house since the tree has been up for projects that we're working on in 2020. And they've both said the same thing without prompting, is that tree real? And they have to walk up to it and look. Most people don't usually ask me that with a 12 foot tree. They usually assume that it's artificial, but not these. And it's because of what I just explained to you. So we are going to dive in. You're seeing the tree pretty much decorated, but I'm going to take you step by step. We're going to talk about all the tips that I know you'll appreciate in this video. A sincere thank you to Balsam Hill for sponsoring it. 
Okay, so last year I got a ton of questions from you guys about how to decide uh, the proper height for your tree. So I wanted to give you a tip for that. Typically speaking, I like to recommend that you try to keep at least six inches between the top of your tree and your ceiling. And you also have to account for your tree topper. So for example, if you have nine foot ceilings and you have a tree topper that's usually they're about 12 inches tall. So if you have nine foot ceilings, a 12 inch tall tree topper, then I wouldn't go any larger than a seven and a half foot tree because at the top of the tree, once you add the topper, that'll put you at eight and a half feet and you'll still have a pretty nice distance between the top of your tree and your ceiling. Okay, my friends, I have been waiting all day to show you this. Look at that. You hear my dog snoring in the background, but this is Dee Stevens. She makes absolutely incredible designer ribbon. When I saw this, I had to have it. <laughs> Mirrors and pearls and rhinestones and it's velvet. Can't quite get close enough to show you that, but so beautiful. It's five inches wide. I don't think I've ever worked with five inch wide ribbon. That's quite this thick and luxurious so um, normally I would cut it into smaller pieces but I don't want to cut it so we're gonna try something different this year <laughs> wish me luck okay my friends I am ready to start decorating I am up here in these ladder streets <laughs> ready to use this absolutely stunning ribbon I'm not gonna lie this ribbon is a little intimidating but this girl loves a challenge. So I always start with ribbon or garland if I'm gonna use it on the tree. So I am just going to, I like to let the ribbon just kind of naturally fall where it's going to fall and um, secure it there. So we'll start with that. If I don't like it, ugh, we can always take it down. But uh, for now, we are gonna start. So, Trying to think of the best way to do this where you guys can see. I think you can see that. All right, so I also cannot find my, and she's ready to connect, so I'm gonna be quiet in a minute and play my music, but I can't find my wire cutters. So I've got some scissors here in my pocket, and the sun's not cooperating with me right now. So, all right. So all I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm going to take one of these stems and lock this in. Now you can actually take uh, a, a limb on the tree and fold it back to hold it, but because this ribbon is so thick, I'm going to give it a little extra security so that I don't have to worry about whether or not it's going to stay in place while I'm out while I'm pulling on it. This is why they give you gloves. I should probably put them on. I like to feel everything that I'm doing. So the big secret that, maybe it's not a big secret, but the one tip that, that I can give you is to make sure when you are, if you're using ribbon, tuck it deep into the tree. So it'll not only help the tree keep its shape, but it'll look like the ribbon is kind of naturally flowing out of the tree. Uh, and what I mean by that is, do not try this at home. I am a professional and I'm not afraid of heights. So if you are, please get someone to help you with this part. But you see how I'm going deep within the tree? So now the tree's keeping its shape. Its shape. You wanted to keep that triangle, that classic triangular shape. And if you tuck the ribbon deep in, it'll help that happen. So, there's one, and then I may try to do two here, two little loops. I'm not going to secure this just yet because I want to get an idea of what it looks like. I'm going to go down a little bit. Hopefully, you can still see. Try to get up close this year so you guys could really see what I'm doing. It takes a little more effort on my part, but hopefully, you find more value on your part. Can you see that coming together? Yeah, that's really pretty. So I'm probably going to go ahead and lock that in. 
use them and I'm gonna turn my music on and get to work you get the idea just kind of how it's flowing down the tree is where I'm going to secure uh, with these all right son I see you I see you I get it Alexa resume play I was so excited to get that ribbon in the tree that I forgot to put my tree topper on. <laughs> so this year is the first year I'm not making my own tree topper. I'm using this one from Balsam Hill. And the one thing that I forgot to mention, I always start with the tree topper first, always. Because what I don't wanna do, especially with the 12 foot tree, is knock ornaments over when I'm trying to put it up later. So I'll usually start with a tree topper and then add my garland or ribbon. But thankfully I caught myself before I got too late into the process. Okay, had one small little issue. I ended up not having quite enough ribbon for my liking for the tree. There are 15 yards of ribbon on the tree right now. I ordered one more roll, so that's five more yards. Should be here tomorrow, but it's not gonna stop the party. We can keep working. So today I'm gonna work on two different techniques that I like to use on the main tree. The first one is decorating from the inside out or from deep within the tree. Out. So what I do is take any of my older ornaments that I'm not going to use like for the main ornament um, and I, I tuck them deep into the tree. The more sparkly, the more reflective they are, the better. What this is going to do is cause the light inside of the tree to bounce and really give your tree some depth and dimension and really, really um, just help make it even prettier. The second thing that I like to do is a technique I call color blocking. This is where you use all of the same color baubles or ornaments um, at one time. It helps you evenly distribute everything out. So I'm gonna move the camera so you can watch and get to work. For this year's theme, I was all about the Biltmore. This collection that was created by Balsam Hill exclusively for the Biltmore Hotel offers just an incredible, luxurious, regal, absolutely magical feel and I couldn't wait to get started. Here's a tip that I thought you might appreciate regarding how many ornaments to put on the tree. Before I go into it though, just do whatever makes you happy. But if you're looking to achieve that designer look, I have some recommendations from Balsam Hill that I'm going to share with you. I actually started out with four of their 35 piece sets and I ended up ordering, I believe three more. But their recommendation for light coverage when, co when combined with your own existing ornaments for you to consider one 35 piece set for a four and a half to six and a half foot tree, two 35 piece sets for a seven and a half foot tree, and three for a nine to 10 foot tree. And then from there, you would want to increase for fuller coverage. I personally love lots and lots of ornaments and ribbon on a tree, so I used the four sets of 35 from Balsam Hill, and then I ordered a few more of those, and then I also added in some of the older ornaments that I had in stock as well. So 
So over the past few years, I've gotten a lot of questions, so I thought I would address it in this video about how to select the right type of tree and what makes a high quality tree a high quality tree. It doesn't always mean that you're gonna pay more, but there are two things that I look for when I'm purchasing a tree and they are the most important things and everything else kind of falls into place after that. So right off the bat, we're gonna talk about those two things. They are the light count and the tree tip count. Now, the reason the tip count is important is simply because it's just going to help determine how realistic the tree looks for years and years to come. So the higher your tip count, the better the results for a fuller looking tree, no matter if it's a red spruce or a fir, you want a healthy tip count. And for the lights, it's less about the amount of lights for me and more about where they're distributed. With this balsam hill tree, you can see the lights are distributed all the way back to the trunk of the tree. So they start out on the tip and they go deep within the tree from top to bottom and it just makes for a light, spectacular performance. <laughs> no matter if it's day or night, it's absolutely beautiful. Balsam Hill also offers industry leading light technology with their easy plug setup. The light connections between the sections are made automatically inside the tree's patented trunk design. So all you have to do is drop it into place. Once I got all my ornaments in place, I started adding in the floral picks. They are just so beautiful. They added a lot of texture and sparkle to the tree. I'm, I'll make sure to have them linked over on the blog for you if you see some you like and you wanna order them yourself. And this girl loves her pearls. So when I saw these royal pearl garlands, I knew I had to have them for the tree. It was an absolute yes for me. And for the final tip of the video, let's talk about tree skirt size. Balsam Hill recommends that your tree skirt extends about six inches past the width of your tree. This is a 72 inch tree skirt and I will have it linked over on the blog for you. Okay, you guys, I think that's enough tips to keep you busy. <laughs> I hope you had a great time during this video. I'll see you back tomorrow. Until then, love and peace.